How do I start a ghost kitchen concept? And are ghost kitchens successful in 2022? Well, in this video for Marketing Food Online, we're gonna give you the full tutorial on how do I start a ghost kitchen. We're gonna dive into that right now. Before we dive into these 10 steps, we wanna thank our sponsor of this video, Craven Kitchen. So if you're looking to create a ghost kitchen, online order management, Craven Kitchen can make it easy for your customers to quickly place one-off orders, plus even bundled meal plans based upon the individual food items that you make available on your platform. Streamlined digital ordering keeps customers happy and keeps them coming back for more when it's easy to use. And that's exactly what Craven Kitchen is. Affordable transaction fees. So through Craven Kitchen's partnership with Stripe, you can actually collect customer payments securely with transaction fees as low as one and a half percent. Yes, one and a half percent. Affordable fees mean more cash in your pocket than you would earning Square, PayPal, Venmo, or even QuickBooks. All right, so can I outsource order delivery? No time to make deliveries, not a problem. Busy professionals like yourself can outsource delivery using Craven Kitchen's seamless third-party service. You can now get back to the culinary work you love and scale your orders without worrying about logistics and hiring more help. Fitting, well, they also have an integrated marketing tool. Add your unique Craven Kitchen order link to your marketing channels to capture customer orders anywhere you have a digital presence, such as social media, websites, and emails. Did you know by 2030, over 50% of takeout will be made through some type of ghost kitchen? And this industry will be worth nearly a trillion dollars by 2030. Oh, that's pretty fast. Ghost kitchens are on the rise due to small real estate needs, optimal back house efficiency, the popularity of delivery apps, and a maraud of other factors. But what exactly is a ghost kitchen and what's the most efficient process for how to open a ghost kitchen? Let's dive into that first question. What is a ghost kitchen? So if you're new to this business, a ghost kitchen is a restaurant that serves its food exclusively for consumption off premise, not in dining. Most ghost kitchens are delivery only and solely accept orders online through first party and third party platforms. Some ghost kitchens, however, do offer takeout or a drive through option, though these restaurants are the exception to the norm. Now, ghost kitchens can operate as a standalone business for new restaurant tours to test out concepts and ideas. Now, however, they can also act as a brand extension for notably restaurant businesses as well. Sometimes referred to as a dark kitchen, a cloud kitchen, shadow kitchen, or the last term, <laughs> virtual kitchen, ghost kitchens offer restaurants huge benefits. And many of those include the following. Now, let's get into the real estate costs, which are lower, such as overhead, maintenance, property, cleaning, and even the front house related expenses, because you don't have that. Smaller staffs, since there are no servers, and delivery can actually be outsourced, as we mentioned, to a third party delivery service. A simplified startup process, as ghost kitchens have lower setup needs and expenses right off the bat. Not everything about a ghost kitchen concept is a good one, unfortunately. Now, ghost kitchens do, however, have some drawbacks. Some of the most noteworthy are, you actually have a limited customer interaction as most ghost kitchens won't ever actually see their guests in person. As a result, ghost kitchens don't have direct customer feedback and control over the dining experience itself. Simply order and pick up. High delivery costs due to third-party delivery commission rates, unless you're using Craven Kitchen, of course. Constrained menu options, since not all foods actually are best when they're consumed off-premises or during delivery. Now, despite these disadvantages, the benefits of a ghost kitchen are so evident that thousands of them are currently operating in the U.S. alone. It's no wonder why current and aspiring restaurateurs are looking to open one of their own. Now, with that being said, here's a step-by-step -step process we're going to dive into for how to open a ghost kitchen and start capitalizing on this growing demand. So step number one, you want to create a menu and develop a concept. First and foremost, a ghost kitchen concept needs to have the following. It has to be unique and have an appeal to those who want to eat off premise and not in a dining setting. Successful ghost kitchens prioritize foods that are high selling and feasible options for delivery and takeout. Most known delivery types are included as the following. So these are some of the best foods to make for delivery. Fried chicken, sandwiches, mac and cheese, sushi, pad thai is very popular, chicken marsal. Now, of course, Mexican foods of all kinds like tacos, burritos, and chips and guacamole. Breakfast sandwiches and beverages. Those are the most easiest to deliver and they taste great in that delivery time. Now, on the other hand, there are some foods that aren't exactly suitable for delivery due to the diner preference and their inability to travel well during the delivery process. 
Now these could be some of the following. Fried foods, eggs, fine dining entrees, and even steak dinners. With these restrictions in mind, Ghost Kitchen should create a menu of options that are intended for consumption up to an hour after being prepared and will fare well with local tastes. Your initial menu can also be limited in order to see what resonates with diners and optimize inventory management and the kitchen operations as well. Number two, like with any business, you gotta write a business plan and get funding. The first step of a, to start, start a ghost kitchen is to create a ghost kitchen business plan. Now, it doesn't matter if the ghost kitchen is an extension of an existing brand or if it's a totally new concept. Each new restaurant needs to have a distinct business plan. Experienced restaurateurs know that the business plan is the first legitimate step in creating a thriving business. It encourages its writer to think through major steps and major topics such as funding, financing, and operations before breaking ground on the business. Now, a couple of other things in addition to that. Most businesses require funds to obviously get off the ground, and that of course includes ghost kitchen businesses. While expenses may be smaller than a typical restaurant, ghost kitchens can still cost tens of thousands of dollars of her equipment, location, licensing, and marketing, and many other expenses that you're gonna get off the start. When stuck on this step, here are some additional restaurant financing tips to help you get funded faster. Number three, location, location, location. Now, yes, selecting a location for a ghost kitchen is part of the ghost kitchen concept. If the operation is simply a brand extension, it's completely acceptable to run the restaurant in an existing restaurant's kitchen. So if you've already got a brand or a franchise, you might have the ability to open a ghost kitchen as well. This option makes the hunt for space and staff equipment much simpler and easier. However, it runs the risk of overwhelming the backhouse staff and misleading customers when offering the same food from a different brand name. Selecting a unique location is the only option for new restaurateurs, and the choice of where to operate should be based on the availability of kitchen space. Research the location and menu to ensure that it will go over well in the community that you're going to open up. Next up, kitchen space can be bought and of course remodeled to meet the needs of the restaurant ghost kitchen. But this is a time consuming and a bit of an expensive endeavor. The other option is to rent kitchen space, which would involve utilizing an established kitchen for a short period of time. There are existing commercial kitchen concepts, by the way, on the market already, such as the Kitchen Door, Kitchen United, or even Cloud Kitchens. Allow you up to coming concepts to enter the ghost kitchen market by renting space in licensed commercial kitchens to prepare and sell your food. Number four. Restaurant reg regulations, of course, apply to ghost kitchens as well. So despite not having a dining room though, ghost kitchens are of course subject to the same regulations and licenses that affect regular dining restaurants. Preparing and serving food must be safely and with the proper precautions, which often requires permits and license to do such a thing. The restaurant permits and license needed to legally operate include, but of course are not limited to the following. These are gonna be the general ones. Number one, of course, a business license. Number two, your food service license. Employee health permits. You need to also apply for a seller's permit, a resale permit as well. Now, keep in mind, without interacting with customers day in, of course, and day out, the focus of the ghost kitchen can quickly become production rather than ensuring the quality and integrity of the dishes. This mindset can be a ghost kitchen's downfall if you don't focus on quality. Food safety and quality should be never overlooked since doing so can cost a restaurant repeat customers and potentially get you shut down. Number five, distribution and your logistics. Ghost kitchens need a well thought plan for how food will get to their customers. Now, this first decision is whether to offer direct customer pickup or potentially most ghost kitchens forego this option to streamline the process for drivers and spend less time and money perfecting the restaurant's facade. However, there are financial benefits to offering pickups or drive-through options. For example, if a third-party delivery app does charge up to 30% commission for delivery, offering a 10 or 15% discount for pickup orders directly from the business can actually save the restaurant and the guests a lot of money. The other decision is which delivery methods to utilize. So using one or more of the delivery partners like Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash, means ordering volume will almost certainly be higher than they were if you did not. However, not every delivery app is right for every ghost kitchen, so third-party options should be examined for their benefits and drawbacks before signing up. It's important to factor commission costs into menu prices when partnering with these services. And of course, 
check out the, the Craven Kitchen description down below. As an alternative, Ghost Kitchen businesses can use in-house delivery slash solutions that eliminate third-party commission fees. The drawback, however, is that the restaurants sacrifice exposure and opportunity for new customer acquisition inside of a third party's marketplace. Now, these first party delivery solutions might also be hosted via a third party delivery app, which further simplifies the back end management, of course, of the software. Now, regardless of how the food gets to the customer, it is imperative that meals are sent out of the kitchen in a takeout friendly packaging and containers, of course, to preserve in the intended temperature and keep specific foods separate while they're ready to be consumed. Number six, the best tech for ghost kitchens. Now, like all restaurants, ghost kitchens need a suite of tools and technology in order to run smoothly. Naturally, this means POS software as well as an integration system like a Craving Kitchen or others to sync online orders directly to your POS or your point of sale. Now, if orders are accepted directly from your guests, online ordering software is a must alongside a restaurant analytics platform such as Craven Kitchen to easily analyze sales and produce actionable insights to improve that business. Finally, online loyalty programs can incentivize first-time diners into becoming repeat customers for a restaurant by rewarding takeout purchases with discounts or even potentially free items. Number seven, your marketing plan. Now, you need a detailed marketing strategy should touch upon all of the ways a ghost kitchen will stand out in its market. Acquire new customers and retain the ones that you already have. Here are some marketing ideas specifically for ghost kitchens. Create a restaurant website to boost your SEO and your discoverability, although curious diners to learn more about the business and link to online ordering options. Now, you need to also build a social media presence and promote your social accounts on order receipts. Food pictures, discount codes, and menu specials are quick and easy for filling up a social media feed. Promote your restaurant on delivery apps by paying a premium to place higher than competitors on customer searches. Although it's financially unsustainable to do it over the long run, it's a good practice for newly opened restaurants to build awareness and acquire new customers. Now, you want to also fill out a marketing plan unique to a ghost kitchen. Number eight, hire the staff and employees. Now, I know that in this day and age, it's hard to find people to show up. But the good news is for ghost kitchens is they require a lot less staff and full service restaurants do. With no need for servers, order takers, or counter workers, employees can focus solely on the cooking, packaging, and organizing of orders to be picked up. So this means the kitchen needs to flow as smooth as possible. This starts with the staffing the right employees and training them strictly to adhere to your operating model. As the restaurant staffing crisis persists, Ghost kitchens need to take proactive measures to appeal to job-seeking cooks and gig workers who are looking for part-time work. Some of these steps are the following. Offer competitive pay and, of course, benefits. If you can, that is a huge incentive. Being transparent about advancement opportunities is a good one as well. Fostering a healthy and supportive work environment. Always keep people excited about coming into work. If these offerings are not presented to potential employees, the Ghost Kitchen will find themselves tremendously difficult in hiring reliable talent. Plus, great hires bring value due to easier training and a better chance of employment retention. Now, number nine, food vendors. Of course, you're going to need to establish food vendors. For restaurants that already have a trusted food vendor, it's simple to utilize that same supplier for a new ghost kitchen concept. If the suppliers offer bulk discounts, it's even easier to gain a quick profit from the ghost kitchen as lower food costs mean, of course, higher margins on your menu items. Now, New restaurants might struggle to find the same kind of discounts, which is why starting off with a limited size menu is always important. Ordering a surplus of a few ingredients rather than a smaller amount of multiple ingredients streamlines your kitchen and operations to help create an opportunity for high volume discounts from those suppliers. Now, shopping around to find the supplier who offers the best value gives ghost kitchens the financial breathing room, if you will, they need to actually get up and running. Now, number 10, get open. Now, once the previous nine steps have been completed, now is the time for your ghost kitchen to be fully up and running, staffed, stocked, and prepared to serve hungry customers. And with ghost kitchens set to be, like I mentioned, a trillion dollar business in 2030, there's no better time to get up and running than there is right now. So if that helped you out, definitely give us a big thumbs up. If you've got questions about creating a ghost kitchen, definitely let us know down below in the comments section. And of course, check out Craven Kitchen again, they have some wonderful features that have to give you the opportunity to get your ghost kitchen up and running and smoothly profitable. See you guys in the next video.